Hello and welcome to Nikolai's genetics lessons and if you study biology or genetics, I'm pretty sure that you may get such a question on your exam. What is the isoelectric point for monoamino decarboxylic acid for which PK1 2.2, PKR 4.4 and PK2 9.7. Now I want you to take a look at this picture of 20 amino acids right away. Just looking at our problem, we are told that we have monoamino decarboxylic acid. What does it tell us? That it has to be with the aspartic acid or glutamic acid. Only these two amino acids we call monoamino decarboxylic acid. So you see one carboxylic group here in backbone and another carboxylic group in R group and one amino group, one amino group here, one carboxylic acid group here and one carboxylic acid group in R chain. So when we change pH of the solution, not only amino group can get or lose proton, not only this carboxylic acid group can get or lose proton, but also this carboxylic acid group in R chain. Only these two amino acid has acid in their name. So aspartic acid and glutamic acid. All the rest doesn't have acid in their name. But we have three more amino acids that is different from the rest. If these two under physiological pH, which is 7.4, this is pH of our blood, would be negatively charged and three more, which lysine, arginine, and histidine would be under physiological pH positively charged. Now, in order to solve this problem, we don't need this table, but I still want to show you this table so you would know what we are dealing here with. And you see, here's a table. We have PK1, PK2, PK3, and as electric point for the amino acid. So PI basically means that at this pH, amino acid is going to be at the zwitter ion form. So would have positive and negative charge and would have net zero charge. At this PI, not 100% of the amino acid would be in zwitter ion form but at least 50%. This is what we call PI or uh, isoelectric point. Also looking at this table, we see that most of the amino acid has only PK1 and PK2. So sometimes we also say PK1, PK2 without A here. So all this amino acid represent amino acid whose R group is not going to be charged at the physiological pH 7.4. But aspartic acid and glutamic acid, R group would be charged. So we see PK3 here for the R group. So PKR is the same as PK3. We also see here lysine, arginine and histidine whose R group is also going to be charged but would be positively charged at the physiological pH 7.4. One more time, in order to solve this problem, we don't need this table. I'm just going to use this table for your deep understanding how to solve this problem. Let's analyze, we have PK1 2.2, so PK1 and 2.2, because as I said, monoamino decarboxylic acid, it have to be with uh, aspartic acid or glutamic acid. So PK1, 2.2 and 1.88 here, 2.19. So we now know that this is have to be glutamic acid. So here's a molecule. So we start with carboxylic acid group. And here is going to be central alpha carbon and hydrogen here and amino group here and it's going to have positive charge and 
our group of the glutamic acid is going to be carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, and hydrogen, and carboxylic acid group. So secondary carboxylic acid group. So we have carbon here, carboxylic acid carbon, oxygen, and another oxygen here with negative charge. So negative charge here, negative charge here, and positive charge here. Now it is very important to understand which group is PK1, PK2, and it is easy to guess that PKR is going to be our group here, but very often students make a mistake thinking that this is PK1 and this is PK2, just like using the common sense that we read from left to right, so this have to be first, this have to be second, but this is not quite so, because in the chemistry this group, which is carboxylic acid group, has a priority over the amino group, so PK1 is going to be this group. So PK1 is going to be 2.2, so PK1, 2.2, and PK2 is 9.7, so PK2 is 9.7, and PKR is 4.4. .4. So PKR is 4.4. .4. Now let me explain why I'm using yellow color to designate these two groups and green color to designate this group. These two groups are the same, carboxylic acid groups and have the same properties and as you see PKR is very close to each other, 4.4 .4 here and 2.2 .2 here, which is very different from PK2, which is 9.7 here. So we don't need this table in order to solve this problem, as I said before, just looking at PK1, PKR, we see that these two numbers are very close to each other, and this one is very different, which represent amino group here, so we instantly know that this have to be one of the amino acids that has negative charge at the physiological pH, whether it have to be aspartic acid or glutamic acid. As you remember, everything that is below 7 pH would be acidic, everything above 7 pH would be basic. So we see here two acidic groups, so it have to be acidic amino acid. And we already told this, monoamino decarboxylic acid. But if you would have similar question and you would find that two groups, PK2 and PKR would have similar numbers here, which would be close, you would instantly know it have to be with lysine, arginine or histidine, which would have positive charge at the physiological pH. Usually when you have on exam one of this amino acid where only amino group can be charged and this carboxylic acid group can be charged and R group is not charged, as you see here, it is very easy to solve this problem, even if you mistake that PK2 have to be amino group and PK1 have to be carboxylic group, it doesn't matter, you just add these two numbers and divide by two, this is how you get this number. For example, PK1 plus PK2 and you get this PI or isoelectric point. But it is very easy to make a mistake with this five. Take a look. Many would make a mistake adding this group PK2, PKR and PK1 and divide it by three. This is not how it works. Actually, if we have found that this is acidic amino acid, we have to add PK1 and PKR. That's why I just show them in the same color. So let's do it. So we have, so PI would equal to 4.4 .4 plus 
2.2 divided by 2 and we are going to get 3.3 this is going to be our answer but if 2 out of 3 would have pk above 7 you would know that you are dealing with one of these three amino acid lysine arginine and histidine and in this case you have to add pk2 and pk r and divide by 2 and this is how you are going to get pi or isoelectric point and not to include pk1 in your calculations and with the rest amino acid it is very easy you just have to add pk1 pk2 divide by 2 but with this 5 it is a little bit more complicated first you have find whether it is acidic amino acid or basic amino acid and then you whether have to add these two groups and divide by 2 or whether these two groups and divide by 2 this is how you find as electric point of the amino acid and this is all for today thank you for your attention and see you in the next video goodbye